didn't crash. Hmm. Only his boots are all okay. She looks so much better like that. things go south. Otherwise, just don't say anything. You could manage that, right? There's a train going past. Fucking train. Jesus Christ. Right. Tenry, I'm assuming you're prepared to tell me why such a brief scouting mission ended up taking so long. It wasn't planned that way, I assure you. But during our walk, I ran into a few halfling hunters. One of which was badly injured. So, I applied some of the wound healing techniques Firesol taught me, and tended to his injuries. Guess it took a little longer than I'd thought. Alright, you've said your piece. Now, I want to talk with the Outlander. Alone. Uh, are you sure that's a good idea? She gets quite <laughs> delusional sometimes. Put me around in the family, and... Alone. Y yes of course, Captain. She's a good student, but a horrible liar. Tell me, what really happened out there? She noticed some goblins tracking her, but waited for my help before attacking. That would explain the goblin stench coming from both of you as well as the blood on Tinruth's blade, yet that doesn't sound like Tinruth. I hope this is the truth you're telling me, and not just a tall tale to gain her trust. Okay. What did you tell Foreman? Had to change the story a little, but he believed in me. Really? How did you manage that? Never mind. It doesn't matter. I'm glad you have my back. Not many of the others would have supported me in that situation. That means something to me. When the time comes, I'll proudly vouch on your behalf. I'd like to know more about your past. My past? Wow, no one's ever asked me that before. I mean, <clears throat> of course, typical newcomers are quite likely to find even the dullest days of a ranger interesting in comparison to their own lives. I must have forgotten that. Yeah, nothing ever <coughs> exciting happens to me. Figured as much. Not many can claim to lead as an exciting life as I have. Now anyway, you asked about my past. I was raised alongside Adonin, my older brother, by my aunt and uncle. My uncle took it upon himself to teach Adonin the tricks and values of a ranger when his work permitted. I guess... 
They must have felt bad about excluding me from their exercises, because it was not long before I was involved in the training. Adunan wasn't the slightest bit fond of this, however. I guess being beaten in the spar by his younger sister was too much to handle. <laughs> He'd probably still complain about it today if you were here. <laughs> How many spurs did you defeat in him? Um, one. But it was an intense one. If you talked to him, he'd probably say I rigged it. But how was <laughs> I supposed to know where the end of the cliff was? End of the cliff? Well, we used to battle everywhere we could. The higher up, the better. And I may have tripped him. But I certainly didn't know he'd fall ten yards in the air. I just assessed the situation and worked quickly to take full use of my advantage. Something happened? Something did. Or rather, he brought something upon himself. I don't really want to talk about it right now, okay? In fact, there's some other tasks the others wanted me to carry out. I should probably get those done. Alright. Ah. <sighs> <sighs> Speak your peace. Where is Faradin? I just sent him to patrol the southern ravine fields. If you're looking for him, I'd try somewhere around the Brary Wine Bridge. If he's not there, just follow the road east for a little bit. Sure. Uh... Right. What do you want? Sure. Yes? Yep. Stop moving. Right. See you. Yeah, she looks better too. I oh, know the cloud covers in the shape of Skyrim. I've got tomatoes. Mash them up, boil them, stick them in a stew.
What are you doing out here? I didn't send for aid. All right then. What are you doing out here? I didn't send for aid. Thorman said I could find you here. Figured you could use a hand. Yes, now that you mention it, all this walking has been a huge burden on my legs. I wonder, could you carry me the rest of the way? I don't know if you've looked around, but there's not a lot you can help with. The ruffians and goblins typically steer clear of this place, mostly because I am always walking out here. However, if you're looking just to talk, I have plenty of time. I suppose if Thorman had dispatched me somewhere eventful, I may not welcome inane conversation. However, this is the third time he's assigned me this route, and it's one of the safest roads in the Shire. Come now, there is much that can be discussed as we patrol. Do you know why we're losing the Shire, Outlander? It's not because we lack manpower or strength. We are five rangers strong, six should you pass the trials. But even five rangers is an excessive amount for an area such as this. In reality, two rangers could protect this land, three could do it with ease, and four would be near overkill. Yet this is not the case here, for reasons the others refuse to think about. I know what you would assume, that it is an issue with skill. The rangers here are young for their race and are limited in their abilities. A fair observation, we are some of the youngest of the Nunamorians, all gathered here to carry out a job that should be relatively easy. But where skill is considered, we are still rangers, and we can fight as well as the best of them. Well, unlike the others, I've actually been digging into this, trying to find our problem and solution to it as well. Want to hear it? Of course you don't, but that's not going to stop my ranting. It's purely strategy. We spend far too long reporting progress back to our captain, or waiting for the captain's approval before we do anything. That was great when there was one goblin sighting a month, but now that more pop up every day, we're just wasting time. We need to work independently. Use our own instinct and judgment when it comes to making decisions. After all, if we're all thinking exactly what the captain's thinking, are any of us actually thinking at all? Hmm. What happens should Thorman fall? Nobody would know what to do, the rangers would be in total chaos and we'd be struck down one by one. Sure, Biasel could take over the leadership role, but she's a second in command person and always will be. Unrivaled is the support staff, lousy is the leader. Just don't tell her I said that. Over the last weeks, we've seen more goblins and bandits in the Shire than we ever did in the last hundred years. It has become clear that if we're going to survive, we need to change our approach a little. Problem is, Thorman's a stubborn one, and all my attempts at convincing him have fallen short. It feels pointless sometimes, like... a beauty salon in a dwarven city. <laughs> That's a decent analogy. Might use that later. Hold it. Do you see what that man ahead of us is doing? He's studying the village below, looking for possible invasion points and weaknesses in the guard's patrol. A scout of the enemies, no doubt. All right, outsider. You wanted my trust. Go talk to him. I want to observe how you would handle a situation like this. Oh no, I remember you. You're the one from Halflinton, the one who tried getting in between me and my partner's business transaction. What do you want now?
What? I'm not sure what you're trying to accomplish with this. I'm... I'm just gonna head out now. Don't hear anyway. I'll admit, I was not expecting you to handle it that way. Unfortunately, he'll be back. You may have surprised him a bit, but it's nothing that'll make him think twice about his work. That said, you didn't waste your time trying to reason with him either. A lesser person may have attempted a bribe or something. All right, Outlander, you've proven you can take proper action when necessary, and thus I believe I can trust you. Alright, that's all of them I think. I was just thinking of something. What was it? Oh yeah. That armor. Like it? Got anything good? It's elven light. <sighs> Elven light. Back to it. Okay, that'll do. the stereotype that his threatens are excellent cooks, right? I'm not one, unfortunately. Are you? Um. Yeah. I made clear of Britain. No, no, not an excellent cook. Oh. Speak your piece. Think I'm ready for the next step. I understand you received the blessing from every member of my company. That is good, and frankly spoken, quite impressive. But the approval of my companions is only the beginning. First, you will need to test yourself. Return to me once you think you are ready. New dialogue available with the Rangers. Did you say something? Mind if we talk? Not at all. What's on your mind? I 
like to know about your past. Last time you asked what became of my father, and I was reluctant to reply. But, alas, I suppose I owe you an answer. He came home late one night from out in the field, his cloak dripping from the onslaught of rain outside, and the bottom of his boots worn thin from the great distance traveled afoot. This event wasn't abnormal. Sometimes he'd be gone for weeks without notice, and then show up in the dead of night while I was still asleep. His ranger work kept him occupied like that. I'll never forget this night in particular, though. He came in like he always did, calm, attentive, and curious on my well-being. However, this time something was off, I could tell, but I didn't make mention of it. It was like something outside bothered him. As if he couldn't wait, he said it was time for the final lesson he could teach, the last doctrine that separates average men from rangers, but... I never found out what he was talking about. Orcs. They raided before we could manage to defend ourselves. Amidst the chaos, I must have fallen unconscious. Still not sure how or why, just that I did. Probably by an orc club or a loose piece of rubble. When I came to, my father had been slain. A scimitar cut right across his back and multiple arrows scattered from his right shoulder to left thigh. At least he went out fighting, I suppose. He always said he would. <laughs> Had no idea. There's no need to apologize. That was a long time ago. Through time, things change, and you find it easier to move on from the things you never thought you'd part with. But I do not mean to trouble you with my story any longer. There is plenty to accomplish, and unless you have something else to say, I'd like to return to my duties. All right. Sure. Um, didn't exactly go where I wanted to then. Good day. How do you think these current events should be handled? Offensively. We need to quickly drive away the evil that threatens the security of the Shire. Evil men with evil intentions cannot refrain from committing evil deeds. Why wait until it's too late? We should strike before innocents are harmed. Bring battle to those ruffian scum before they're ready. True, the evil acts are inevitable and nearly upon us. I'm glad you agree. It'll take an extra voice around here to convince Thorman, Byersell, and Dursik that they're wrong. I'm pleased to see that you're on our side. Any more at my or about your past? I suppose you're wondering what happened to my brother then. That's what you asked last time. But I didn't want to say anything about it. I suppose they deserve an answer now, though. It wasn't that long ago. Not even a full year when my uncle left at Joan Halvard's company. Our training was still very much incomplete at the time of his leaving, so, to compensate, he told us to seek out the Chief Ranger of the Shire. His Chief Foreman was renowned for turning young Minamori novices into fully capable and experienced rangers. So we left to finish our training under his guidance. Along our way here, we took a brief stop at Ray to rest our feet and eat our fill. It was too long, in my opinion. While we're in the tavern, some blonde started up a long chat with the Donan. I knew she was trouble from the beginning, but did my brother listen? No! He had to impress her with the stories of his ranger training and all the battles he had. Ahem. <clears throat> One. Well, when I woke up the next morning, 
both my brother and that swine were gone. Years of growing up together, fighting and playing, training and watching, and then he just leaves like that! With a girl he hardly even knew! What kind of brother would do that? Maybe you don't know the full story. You would take his side? He abandoned me! There was absolutely no reason to do that! None! I waited for him to return for weeks, but nothing ever changed. I was left alone with no idea how to proceed and still questioning the meaning of my predicament. Finally, I realized that there was only one thing left to do. I had to continue towards the Shire. By that time, I'd waited nearly a month and, well, it became apparent he wasn't coming back, no matter how much I wanted to believe it. And if you thought you had a bad when you arrived here, Foreman kept me on the doorstep for a solid week before he let me into the base. Apparently, my uncle forgot to mention that I was coming to the Shire, and they were only expecting my brother. It took longer still to convince them of my new Nemorian bloodline and skills with the blade. But that's about all I've got. I apologize if my backstory isn't an expansive one, but it's not exactly if I have a lot to tell. I'm still fairly young as new Nemorians go. <sighs> Tracking down her brother would be a good idea. Or finding out what happened to him. Huh? And do you think these current events should be handled? Defensively. Only dealing out justice once an unjust act has been made. Some might argue that this is a fool's approach, and that such a delay would only cripple our effort. But how would we discern ourselves from the enemy if we struck without fair cause? The punishment should come after the crime, not before. Suppose so. Indeed they do. But when it is in the discernment between life and death that our opinions lie, it's a good idea to pick a side. I suppose I have some time. What about? How'd you get that scar? It was a gift from an old associate. Thanks for clearing that up. I have no time for sarcastic remarks. <laughs> Did you need something, or are you just trying to find someone to mock? All right. Uh huh. Be brief. I'm ready. I'm glad to see you've returned for the next phase of your initiation. I would ask that you seek out Byersa. She can help you progress through your training. Find her at the Buinbale Woods training area. Uh 
All right. Then show me the meaning of haste. Now that that's over... He's not up here. All right. Yes. <sighs> I'm ready to begin. I was waiting for you. I thought you might never show. Yet it is fortunate that you did. My task today is to get you ready for the life of a ranger. I wouldn't have you think it is an easy life. Once you indicate that you are ready, you will be subjected to a series of trials. Each will symbolise a hurdle you must overcome before you may be deemed fit for your new tasks and life. Are you ready to begin the process? I'm ready. Start the trials. Good. The first trial is the trial of strength. I need you to break this boulder behind me. Your ability to conjure fire is breathtakingly beautiful. Most impressive. Looks like Dorusk might finally have worthy competition around the base. <laughs> There's more to being a ranger than splitting a rock. Do not jump to such conclusions. Every protector of the Shire has undergone these challenges. You are not receiving special treatment in any way. Uh, let us continue with a tranquil mind. The second trial is that of morality. Say you just apprehended a man responsible for killing five goblins. The man begs you for mercy. How do you respond? Must be retained, slain conscious beings must not be ignored. So to lock him away in confinement is your answer. Would that suffice? What if the man killed five men, or elves? Wouldn't make any difference. I admire your resolute conviction. You were capable of adhering to your beliefs. Still, I do wonder if you were able to develop a flexible attitude towards life and the world. Thank you for answering these questions. Based on what you say, I suspect you might enjoy the company of Durusk the most. The next trial is that of mental endurance. Do you see that tree stump over there? 
I need you to stay perfectly still atop it for six hours. You cannot move during that time. Uh. As your instructor, I am forbidden to joke while you're under my guidance. What tree stop? Oh, this one. Remarkable. You made it appear so easy. <laughs> Let us continue. For the trial of wisdom, you need to answer the following question. What creature walks on four legs in the morrow, two in the afternoon, and three in the twilight of the day? Um You'll have to explain your reasoning for that answer to me one day. Let's say that wisdom is not your strongest suit, shall we? <laughs> but fear not, I won't tell the others. <laughs> the correct answer is a man. He walks on his hands and knees as a child on two legs as an adult, and on three with the aid of a cane in the hours before the night falls. I suggest we move on to the next trial, personal development. Man I want to ask you a question. Wasn't what do you option. hope to achieve in the world? Help and protect others who cannot help themselves. Quite well. But what if you actually achieved what you set out to do? What purpose would your life have then? Well, there's always more. This sounds like a realist's attitude. You were never done learning. No when perfect means never sufficient, and appreciate the good enough to become content. You have now endured all of the trials in this exercise. I am quite satisfied with the results, and will report my experience to Thormin. Thank you for your patience. I will ask of you to return to Thormin now. I'm sure he'll be delighted to see you. Stay safe. Fortune has returned you to us. Byersell delivered her report of the trials, and I hear nothing but good stories. I dare say that you are ready for your initiation now. 
Take some time to reflect. Return to me when you are ready. We will prepare the rites in the meantime. You stand before me with hope, I see. I'm ready. Excellent. Come, brethren. Let us introduce this recruit. We have assembled here to welcome a new sister in our ranks. Let us speak the words of rites and the offerings to the Vanir. We call to Chesco, the Lord of the Winds. We invite Tamira, the Lady of Stars. We call upon Maldoran, Master of Deep Currents. We beckon Enigma, Shaper of Mountains. We seek out Eleonora, the mother of beast and tree. <laughs> Eleonora. We invite Malie, the easer of hurts. Finally, we look to the one who sees over all. We seek out your power, so that the one who is deemed worthy to join us may receive our secrets. Let us now say the ceremonial words in our old language. Anadune Sierra Helenu. Esfalaxildon Yalamat. Adulia is indeed Bathul, Telda, Falunia, Izu Karthan, Balista, Lokui. Izu Karthan, Balista, Lokui. Sila, Niund, Balam, and Athis, Yuroth, Dunya, Zalbathnam, Azinu. So it has come to this question. The question that will determine your future. The question that you cannot evade. Good Outlander, will you take up the oath to call yourself a ranger? I subject myself to you and yours and will walk the path of a ranger. And so we welcome you to our ranks. May your arrival bring light and hope to a world on the brink of darkness. Take pride in your new title, in your new name, and in your new companions.
Who's blocking the way? Ow! That was my toe! I don't intend on getting that close. Ah. Okay. And so it has come to pass that you have become one of ours. You are a marked woman from this point forward. People will look to you and expect better. I trust you are prepared not to disappoint them. But congratulations. I hope you are as proud and pleased as the rest of us. I am, and this is an honorable occasion. That is good to hear, but we have little time to bask in the joy of today. There is work to do. I'll make you proud, I'm certain. As am I. Let us hope that something good comes to us. But we will not fashion the good ourselves. So, let us speak of your first mission as a ranger. What is that mission? The Shire is on the brink of disaster. We have several clues, including some brought forward by yourself, that a major force is trying to occupy the region. This warrants not just more investigation, but I propose we take action as well. Several members of this force, and I suspect who might be leading these members, have been spotted in the Shire. I need you to join up with the rangers and halt their activities. Which one of your company would you like to aid first? Ah... Uh, Durusk. Durusk is down in the fields by Tuckbur. The ruffians over in that area, they're getting braver. More foolish, even. They're no longer worried about keeping their work discreet. I suppose, with their current numbers, they no longer feel obliged to hide themselves. And, with the stubbornness of some halflings... Well, you can see where this is going. Some kind of disagreement, I presume? One of the halflings decided to have a talk with some of the bandits yesterday. Without getting into needless detail, the farmer managed to chase these ruffians off of his property. But they won't be humiliated by those they think they can lord over. They'll be back, and Curtin will be killed. Unless we can interfere. <laughs> Say no more, I'll get it done. As I said before, you won't be doing this alone. Durusk is already there, and he's waiting for your arrival. I'd also expect the farmer and his sons will aid in the defense of their home. From my reports, you'll need all the help you can get anyway. Now get out of here, and make sure the first halfling to stand up for his freedom doesn't become the first halfling to have died taking that stand. Okay. Well, I am assuming... How are you holding up? Do you have time to talk? What's on your mind? There's something I need to do. What is it? Well, I intend to find something that was stolen from me. I thought you might help. Alright, let's get it back. That's it? No questions? Tell me when you're ready. Hmm. Unexpected, but okay. We can't head off now anyway. Why not? I'm not sure where to go yet, but I have a plan to change that. 
Okay, let's keep going for now. All right. What's on your mind? Trade. Um. Let's see what you've got. Right. You probably won't use that, but hmm. Or maybe you will. Okay then. We better get to this halfling before he gets killed. And that skew is running that prevents dialogue. Thank you. 